G'day and welcome to part 43 on the XC restoration. I was going to make this an update one, but I've decided there was a little bit more content there and I'd show it to you anyhow. The problem we've had is this. Haven't done any more on the doors. <laughs> it was usual, it's the usual story with me. But the reason is we've had a week of solid rain. This is the first fine day we've had today. So rather than sort of not doing anything, I decided to have a look at the power windows. We're going to be putting power windows in the car, obviously. The motors are an unknown quantity. They're sort of, the wiring was terrible. So we look at the wiring looms for each door. We look at the power window motors for each door and work out what parts we need to fix them up. Um, and that's pretty much it for this one. There's a lot of small bits and pieces on the 350 and also the XW as well. I'm starting to revisit that because there's a few on a few bits and pieces on it that I really don't like. Uh, on a side note, Holden Calendar from Costco, uh, $10.95 I think it was, and it's got some lovely cars on it. The Ford one wasn't nearly as um, appealing as this. I live on a calendar. I've got one in the study and I've also got one in here as well. Two in here, I think. So anyway, hope you enjoy. So I've had a week of absolutely rotten weather, so it's a bit of downtime. Um, I've decided to leave, even though it's not perfect, I've decided to leave the orange and white on the letters. It's not an original. I've been going over the black. Um, some of it's a bit marked up on the edges, so I'm just using some of this satin black and basically just filling in the voids with a small brush and you know what it gives it a fresher appearance it's tedious and i've got my daughter here and i'm talking to her i am but <laughs> it just helps this sort of mundane task go away so i'm just going to go through here and do this sort of thing if you go get it wrong and go up onto one of these bits here you can just rub it off with your finger um, but i don't want to paint the orange and the white i just want to leave those as a sort of a original part, I guess, or I don't think it needs doing, and I think it'll look too, probably too fresh. So I am going to continue. I'm going to turn the camera off because this is boring as bat crap. So touch that up. So it will sit like that. And these are knackered, these things. Um, it might be such that, I'm just using a small socket. Oh, that's holding. I was going to say, it's probably better to uh, use a dob of uh, urethane. When I get Jeff to fit the screen in the XC, I'm going to get the Honda badge stuck on the 750. They still feel a bit loose. And, yeah, with that in mind, sort of get him to just put a dab there. Urethane sticks to anything. And it's not like silicon. It's a lot better than that stuff. At any rate, I should have plated these bits here, although they're chrome, I can't do anything with that. They go in there like that. But these are the washery bits um, for the spring, and the spring itself looks a bit dirty, but what do you do? I've got to get that to sit as a hole with a little pin, uh, which is there, if you can see it. Can you see it? It actually hurts doing this, so I'm just going to steamroll ahead and do it. I didn't think it's son of a bitch. Gun, sorry. Like that, there's bugger holding it on. Anyway, stick it on the bike and see how we go. Cars, hey? Cars. We go through cycles of value. It wasn't that long ago that uh, you could pick up XC Falcons very, very cheaply, early 2000s and so forth. I mean, way back in 985, I picked up a mint two-door LJ Tirana in lime green for 2400 and that was retail from a yard. Uh, privately, could have got a lot cheaper. Now you won't get any change out of about 25000 or more for that same car. It was a four on the floor as well. Now, these are the power window um, looms, and you can see how bad they are. Now, this is what happens when cars get to, I'm going to say 15, 20 years old, they hit rock bottom in value, and they're picked up cheaply and driven into the ground and then disposed of. Of course, they don't go to dealers or proper repairers to get work done. They're sort of done by home guys that do this sort of business here. Um, rather than toiling with removing a door um, and painting it properly, you get this sort of thing, overspray, which is probably my worst pet hate. And rather than disassembling the inside to get a loom out, they just run side cutters through the whole thing and join up the crimp terminals. So we can't use these in that condition. And even if we could, there's no way in a pink pit I'm going to. 
So what we need to do is pull these limbs apart, uh, label them again, because that label will be coming off. There are two grommets, different size grommets. We've got these little ones on the back doors. On the front doors we've got a big one. Our XC Falcon was ordered pretty much hamburger with a lot. The only two options the car didn't have when it was new was the 351 engine and also it didn't have a sunroof. But the rest of it, it did. It had power windows, long range fuel tank, it had towing pack, um, four speed manual, it had a lot of things in it that were really desirable. This is a cut off the white door which I disposed of, the Fairlane door. I kept it because of the location of where, hello daddy, the location of where the power window thing goes. Now the loom goes. Ford are great like this, they put a little dimple there so you can't really get it wrong. Um, but once I've determined uh, the size of it, which I could have measured, but I didn't, then I'll dispose of this. Now this is done quite roughly, you can see what Ford have done. They've just run a hole saw through it. Basically, the door wasn't made like that. It has the dimple there, as we said before. So I'll get a drill, a hole saw that size to drill our doors. All the holes for this car are in the body. I don't know. I think on the XD they're there from factory and they're grommeted. They've got sort of plugs in them. Where I'm not sure with XCs, but they're all in the body anyway. So in the meantime, I think what we'll do is there's a few things we've got to do. Let me just clarify this. I'm just about to do a bulk order of parts. I need four brand new door handles because I don't like the ones I've got. Some of them are pitted and they're dull and crap. Apparently the original ones are better than the repro, but what do you do? So I'm ordering four new door handles, the outer belts, the Bailey channels, and we've got to have a look at the power window motors to determine what parts we need for that. So what I want to do is I want to have all the power windows running in the doors with Bailey channels, outer belts, door handles, Oh, and the locks too. So that's all coming up very, very soon. Now in the meantime, I want to have a, a bit of a sticky of these things, which will mean that I'm going to fiddle around with them. These are off the ZH Fairlane donor car that I got and then gave to Jason Hill. Now that's all good. It's dirty, but it's okay. There's nothing there untoward. I will take this off to have a bit of a look. But what I'm worried about is where I see overspray. We're not having overspray on our car. I hate that. We'll relabel it. That's the left hand rear one. We need to get rid of all this crap here. And then of course that will go down into the vehicle's um, wiring loom. That'll go up the front and plug into something there. That will be a motor, and that will be a switch on the door itself. So I'm going to go around, unwind this stuff, and retape it. We're using plastic tape. We're not going to use the other stuff that I like using in the engine bay. And while we undo this, we'll just have a look. In case they've been rooted too well, we'll get a pretty strong flavour for how good it is. Unfortunately. This paint does seem to relent and leaves us with a nice black grommet, which is what we want. Um, so I can clean all that off just using a bit of old thinner. The other thing is, you know, just a very important, just to cast an eye very carefully. You can see that conductor there has a cut in it. We don't want blown fuses or anything like that. So I'm just going to go around and clean this up and retake what I need to. And we should be in good stead. So I've gone from something that basically looks like this to our lovely reconditioned loom. Well, it's not reconditioned, it's just cleaned up, which is that. And it's all retaped with auto electrical tape, not the standard um, tape which tends to leave a gum behind. So there we go, we've cleaned the connectors up. A little bit of extra cleaning in there if we wanted to. Uh, that, of course, goes off to the vehicle loom at the front behind the kick trim. Uh, through the door aperture or through the door jam if you like. Whoops, I missed a bit there. No, I haven't. That's still alright. To uh, have I cleaned that properly? Is that clean? Oh, look at this. <laughs> no, yeah, we got rid of it. Okay, and into the door. Now what we can use in the door is we can use convoluted tubing. Now I don't think XC's released. I'm pretty sure XC's didn't use this. XD's were the first Ford I've seen with convoluted tubing, which was used in the engine bay. 
uh, where the loom goes over the engine. Not a bad idea because it's very protective and we can just sort of squeeze it on and just protect the wiring. Uh, I could wrap that a bit better. Hang on a second. The um, front door ones are a lot more difficult, or at least a lot more time. There's nothing difficult about them, but just more time consuming just because of <clears throat> the extra wires and also the fact that the um, last person that worked on it cut them and made a mess. And of course, I'm referring to, as we said before, this crap here. And that's just an idiot. Why would you do it? But anyway. The other thing is, if you're going to cut looms, you don't cut them all at the same spot. You sort of stagger the cut so you've got um, shrink tubing sort of staggered. But this is maybe there wasn't space for that. I, that looks to me like the guy's just a lazy bastard and um, a bit of a dodgy uh, individual at best. But well, what do you do? So I'll go ahead and do those. That I'll lay it in the car. Might just clean up a bit more. Right, so I'm still doing badges. Oh, I'm just touching things that I shouldn't be touching. And I'm about to wet sand and buff the XW's boot. I've repainted the blue on the 350 tank. I'll show you that in a second because I wanted to lay stripes out, but I it was too. I painted on a day that was too warm. It was far too peeling. When I went to wet sand it, I went through it, and it's reduced. But it doesn't need to be thick because it flows better this way into all those little nooks and crannies. Isn't that exciting? So all I'll do now after this is I'll just clean up on the lettering and just put some white down. I might just use the XW's um, Wimbledon white. This is just acrylic I'm putting down. But this badge has been scraped in there. There's a scrape somewhere, yeah, on the end. But that'll do for now. Um, I'll just get that edge. It's freaking tedious, this. <laughs> I, people always say how patient I am. I'm really not. Freaking crows. Right, so we've taken all this stupid nonsense out and tidied our loom up. Got rid of all the overspray and that is how it is. Now, uh, when this is installed, the other one had a, well the others have got a, a sort of a rigid tube, so I might actually have to add the convoluted tubing just to give it a bit of protection, just in that midsection. Right, I am in a pickle because, these are the real ones, two equal size holes, and that would correspond with the one that's in the off cut of fairly door I've got. The front ones have a big one and a small one. Now, what I can see with this, that part goes into the door, which uses the bigger grommet. So the front door shell must have a bigger hole in it than the, than the one that goes into the vehicle. If anyone's got an XC with power windows or a ZH fairlane, can you tell me? Send me a message or something. Just to verify which side those grommets are on. This one doesn't look to have been cut. Uh, the other thing is, we've got the window motor here. That's the switch um, plug. And the window motor's there. This little bloke here is taped off. Would that be courtesy light for the... Um, what do you call it when you open the door? Some of the LTDs and so forth have a courtesy light at the base of the door. I'm wondering if that might be that there. Anyway, whatever. So, I finally got around to repainting the boot on the XW. It's been annoying me for a little while. Um, I just wasn't happy with it. But it looks pretty good now. So, I might have to do a little bit more on that edge there. Not quite smooth enough, but it's just something that's been really bugging me. So I think what we'll do next on this car, we've got to lower the back. The springs are completely wrong. So I don't know whether to get them reset or a new set of springs for it. Not sure. But I've got to clean it all up now. It's got all that colour sanding nonsense on it. So I can shut the book on the boot. The next thing on this is the springs. And I think I'll have a look at that 350 tank again. Probably should have put this blue down a little bit thicker. You can see through it there. The stripe goes down below that, up here and then sort of up and along. So I probably should have put extra coats down, but I didn't. But I don't think it's going to matter because I think it's out of the way of that. Right, so we've got a lovely 350 side covers on the side, obviously. They're all sort of done up and sitting there waiting for the engine, I suppose, and the tank. Well, I am happy with that. Door trims. 
These are ZH Fairlane. The cards are in reasonably good nick. The metal top's in good nick. And the inner belt is rigid, so if I bend that, it'll snap. If we turn it over, there's a couple of things to note. One, it's completely wrong. The colour we've trimmed our GXL in is this green. It's yeah, not that bad a match, I guess, but um, it's totally wrong for a Fairmont GXL. Now, this Fairlane one has a chrome trim. I think the Fairmont has that too. This is a power window one, given it's got the two big cutouts. That one for the, this is the driver's one, obviously. That would be for the big lot of blooms that come into the master switch. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, but it's got this faux stitching and wood and all this sort of crap. And GXL's coming. GXL's didn't have that. They were plain from here right to the very top. And they just had a strap running quite, or running right the length of it, with two steel straps, or two steel uh, fittings. And I don't have them. So I'm going to have to find an absolutely, I don't care if these, the, the, the trims I get are absolutely knackered, but I do need to find one with those steel uh, fittings so we can get these redone because I think these are going to look a bit manky in the car. I'll get away with it. I'll get away with it to get a roadworthy and whatnot. Um, but I don't think I want to put them in. The problem is this, my budget. I've spent a lot of money and so I really do need to think about this. These are dirty. They might clean up. I don't know. I just think I'll get them redone, get some new ones, uh, or get them recovered. I think that'll be a safer way to go. But anyhow, that's all I've got in the way of door trims. Right, so here's the armrest for that door, which looks gross. Um, power window switches. You can get a new template here with the right font and, you know, all that sort of stuff on them for which switch is which. Pretty easy to work out by just looking at them. Um, the problem with these, though, they're screwed into this plastic frame and the back of it's broken. But I can fix that. I'm not worried about that. Um, I think these switches work right. I'm pretty sure I tested them, but yeah, I can't remember. It's a long time ago. Um, spoke to Jason Hill, who said he didn't mind recovering them. So we can recover them with this stuff here. It's a very complicated piece, though. I recolored the ones in the XW by priming them rubbing them back, priming them, and using a flex aid, and I still managed to keep the grain in it. Um, I think I did. Yeah, I did. So these are pretty foul, but I can't use that the way it is there. But at the end of the day, we've got all the armrests and all the switches. And we've also got these manual regulators. I've got a set of these. These came out of the doors, the blue doors, which are on the car now. Um, and I was going to put these back in just to hold the glass until I did the, wind, the electric ones up. Originally, I was just going to use manual windows in this, but I've decided electric windows were a nice option, so I might as well do that. There's a set of those, which are quite unwieldy to so these guys here. I think I've tested these. I tested the seats, but I don't remember whether or not I tested these. I might as well bang a bit of power in here and see what happens. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to use the back one because they're smaller and easier to film. And we'll just see what happens if we stick some juice in here. Gee, yeah, that seems to work. Hang on. Seems to do something, which is cool. Um, Alright, so what happens if we pull this bit off? Pull the motor off and suss it out. Now there are, oops, we, there are some rebuild kits you can get for these. There's a full gear set, which is 70 bucks. If your worms go and you're stuffed, I suppose, but the gear will sacrifice first because it's plastic with a metal pinion sort of thing on it. So let's just pop this in. Oh, that friggin' hurt. Oh, I wasn't ready for that. That was stupid. There's a spring in it. Um, right, let's have a look. Where are the glasses? Where did I put them? I must have left them inside. Right. Does that come up? No, there's a screw there. Oops. Um, chunks of plastic. Now that will be... Hang on a minute. There's big chunks of plastic. Now, John Parnas. I always mention him. Because he's a good guy and he knows what he's talking about. John Parnas said to me, he found a way of rebuilding these 
quite reasonably. Now all those bits of plastic, I think are a pin, which is a safety mechanism for the window. So when you get it up to the top or down to the bottom and keep on the switch, it dunk, 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 you know what I mean? It sort of stops it from burning the motor out. But the, um, let me just see if I can lift that off. Yes, I can. Right. So I think it's a plastic roller that goes in those little hollows there that sort of fit in so that it gives it some protection. I've not seen one. There's a big chunk of something there. I don't know what that is. I really do need my other glasses. Um, this looks bad, actually. If that worm's all right, I'm home and hosed. Can I get that out? Here we go. Now, the bit that's important to me is that this thing's in reasonably good nick. And I'm going to have to wash it to really see it, but I'm tipping that that gear is a okay, okay. So, that would mean these bits are okay. I'm going to wash it, of course. And the worm on the motor is okay. So that all we need to do is figure a way of that not being able to swing around. It sits in that rebate down the bottom, but I'm sure there's a roller sort of set up. Yeah, there's a roller sort of thing that goes in each corner. Now there's a guy on the line that just stuck a couple of nuts in there, three sixteenth nuts, two of them, one, two, three, four. Sorry, two of them, two, four, six, and I'm not doing that. That goes there, and the roller goes in here, whether it's a cushion thing or a safety thing, I don't even know. But what this this is actually really, really good news because if I don't have to buy these, these are dear. These are 70 bucks for that setup. Whereas the roller thing is likely to be considerably cheaper. And there's the remains of one there. So look, that's something we can look at and we can repair. Um, and all being well, we are in the clear with the motors. This is a back one, so it's going to be a lot better than the front ones. But I'll need to pull those apart to ascertain what the story is. But on the whole, I reckon we're not bad shape for this motor anyway. We just got to make sure we get rid of all that nonsense there. All right, this one's interesting. It's got a lot of um, liquid grease around it. And it looks like those balls might be intact. So this one could have been rebuilt. This is the driver's one. Um, I'll put that to one side. There's a greasy mess in there. But there's something in there, in where the it should be, so maybe it's been redone. Don't know, we're going to find out. Oh yes. This one's been rebuilt. So, this one has the plastic bits. Now they've gone oval, so they're worn. But they're intact, which is quite cool. And I'm assuming they were originally round. These ones have gone an oval shape. Let me try and wipe one off for you. I don't know. I'll ask John. John will know. He knows everything about these. So I'm going to pop that back in. Put the cover on. And we'll test them all to make sure they work. Right, so here are our four window motors. This one's a little bit different. I think we mentioned that before. It's been replaced. It has got the date, the 8th of May, 1977 on it. We've got to check to see if these all work. I know some of them do because I've tested some of them. Not all of them though. So I'm just going to stick some juice in here. My fingers are all funny because they've got powder from gloves on them. So let's have a look at this. Ready? That's the driver's one which I was tipping was, it had been mucked around with before, it's got new rollers and stuff in, but we're still gonna go through it. That's perfect, can't fault that at all. It's lovely and quiet. Never a complaint with that. A bit noisy, this one. So it might be worth pulling them apart and having a look. Let's try the other direction. Oh, that's not too bad. That sounds quite crap. But it rotates. 
That one's clearly the noisiest of all, this one here. So I think we might pop him apart and have a look and see if we can figure out why she's so noisy. Might be a bit dry on the bearings. So I'm gonna clean this lot up and leave him out. Right, so these two are lovely and quiet. All I'm gonna do with these two is recondition the mechanism in here. I'm gonna clean them all up, rattle can them, they can go straight back in the car. So they can go to the side for now. These two are noisy. Uh, this one particularly, so let's start by taking the mechanism out on the off chance that the racket is either the way the motor was sitting or alternatively what's going in here is skew if and horrible. So I'm just going to pop this off. And there's debris in there anyway. And I'm just going to repair it. There's still a lot of crud in there. Bits and pieces. I'll stick them in a bit of pyjama. And power it up so we haven't got the um, all the messed up stuff to worry about. So we will stick some juice in this and just see what happens. With where we have it insulated a bit more. It'll give us some idea. It probably wouldn't hurt to pull it apart and lubricate bearings and stuff like that. But... Who knows? That's actually quiet. I'm not worried about that. Let's just change the polarity around. Uh, here we go. There is a bit of chattering in the bearing. I can hear it. All right. Okay. So let's have a closer look at it. We have a worm here and a preload thing at the end. That will ascertain how much float the rotor has. Two bolts and the rest will come apart. So, I'm going to pull into bits. And we'll see, one, what's inside, and two, if we can rectify the problem. We shouldn't be using the wrong, ooh, shouldn't be using the wrong size spanner. That would have been 7 16th, I think. Right, so I'm going to pop this off here, and I'm going to unscrew oh, this leaving lock nut basically where it was, so I don't want to lose that setting, which is screwed in rather a long way. And then we'll take these two bolts out. These can be a pain because if the getting the brushes in. I think. I've not done one. And they're loose, which isn't always a good thing. Oh, well, there they are. I've got my daughter here, Rosie's here. Hi, Rosie. Hi. She isn't into this sort of stuff. Yes, I am. What? Electric window motors? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see if I can pop you out like that. I just don't know anything about them. Well, there's not much to know, really. Exactly. Okay, take the gasket, put him off to the side. And then, what comes now, Rose? I think we've got to pop this out, don't we? Like that. <laughs> Oops. Permanent magnets are healthy. Water ingress, bad. But not the end of the world, we can fix that, so I'm not worried. Let's put that there so you can understand which way it came out. Now, let's have a look at that. We pull this out and the brushes fly out, which is going to happen anyhow. It's dry, but not knackered, if you know what I mean. So where's that bit of pyjama I had? Where the heck is it? Oh, oh there. Yeah. Oh. I got it, Rosie. Oh. I saw it because you're... Go on, say it. No, I can't do. say it. I do. I can't say it. Say it. Say it. I can't say, say it. it. So, we can see some water's got in there. Uh-huh, not good. It doesn't smell, not like my daughter does. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use some scotch Bright Now on these, this is a commutator, and it doesn't feel like I'm, I feel like I'm doing this wrong actually, but this is when we have to say we don't give a rat's willy. Okay, sort of clean. Let's go a little bit further. Is that still taping? Yes, it is. Okay, that'll do. Now, <clears throat> a couple of things. 
this has a sleeve on it so you can't really see inside here you'll see there's a bit of thickness to the commutator that's the commutator there now on bigger motors what you can do is you can pop that into a lathe put a live center there and then you can get a lathe that you can take a little bit off if the commentator is absolutely knackered this one doesn't look too bad at all the next thing we've got to figure there's a little switch there is we've got to get these things to stay back i want to pop some lubricant into the bearing so I am going to get a cable tie, which I had here somewhere, and I'm going to work it through there. This is just to hold the brush back. And, and that should do a dandy job of holding that brush there, right back in, the, in this little house, in the receptacle. Uh, these are worn. By the look of it. I've got to get that in, so I'm going to toy with that just a moment. Right, so I've got a cable tie holding that brush back, and I'm holding this one with my finger on the braided cable, sort of coming out the back of it. And I'm just going to pop some bearing grease in here, like that. I'm not going, this is just a turd polishing exercise, I'm not really reconditioning it properly. And then, with any bloody luck, it will go in like that. Mm -hmm. Then I can cut that cable tie off, and I've lost my side cutter, so I'm going to use these guys. Oh, they're there. So I'll just cut that off. And there we have it. And straight off the bat, this should be a heck of a lot better. As we said, this is not a reconditioning exercise. That's why I'm lying it in dusty bit of crap there, but we'll clean it off. Um, I'm just holding it back. And I'm just going to pop a bit of grease on there, because I can. Let me smear it on. Rosie! Rosie always thinks it's funny when I do that. And it's sad, she shouldn't do that. <laughs> now, this can be a pain in the ass because... One, because Rosie's here. Yeah. And two, because it could pop out. And which bloody way was that? Oh shoot, it must go that way. Yes it does. And it's really tough, and I'm holding that with my finger. I'm holding it down, because if that comes up, we're screwed. There we go. That will do. We're good. And we'll just line that up. There's a couple of things that line up with that. So it'll go like that. Mm -hmm. And we just pop the top back on. Actually, I might just try and clean that out a bit. Hang on a sec. One more? Yeah. Um, All my children here. I've got three kids and a dog in the garage with me. Go on, I'm listening. And I did the, um, where the door is. Yeah. The table. I noticed it looks beautiful. Thank you. Did a good job, Lana. I'm doing electric window motors. Do you like them? No. Oh, come on. You do so. You can't get enough of this stuff. I love them. I thought you would. I like them. I love them. I want to frame them. Where's my cat? Lily. You got this dirty crap in your room? Yeah. And this Oh, right, I can't. Right, Alana! Oh, no, no, I've been to that. Yeah, no, no, give, it, give it to me. Let's go. Uh, uh. Oh, yes, it's nice. <laughs> right, so, there's a bush in there. There's a bush in there. And a bear as well. Too easy. Now, hang on, shut up, kids, because I've got to do this. Yeah, I'm doing it, but just hang on to. Oh, now I'm forgetting stuff. Hang on, where's the gasket? Oh, it's here. Just a moment. Uh, I think it goes like this. That's for me. Everyone take a blunt. Everyone what? Take a blunt. A what? A blunt. Sorry to interrupt. I got my National Geographic subscription. I know. I noticed it in the letterbox today. Yeah, we're just going to screw this back together. And then we'll test it. And then we'll go inside and we'll have a cup of tea together. Do you want to do that? My children have cups of teas with me. I'm just going to nip this up. Oh, nip it up. Hang on, we're not done yet. Sweet. Then, I'm going to pop some grease down there, by way of this thing, which will set up the end flow on the motor. This is the filthiest friggin' job. And, let's get him in. Stick some bolts in this thing and check it out. 
I haven't actually checked that with a dial indicator, but I probably won't either if it works. Hang on. All right, let's try this. Let's go for broke. Volts, we need volts. Right, so. Now we have to be quiet for these kids because they need to listen yeah, for right. stray noises that shouldn't be happening. Hang on, just wait. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I need you to be quiet. You ready? Beautiful. Let's go for this bloke here. Stick it the other way. You ready? That is silent. Beautiful. Right, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to stick this dirty crap back in here for now. So as I don't lose anything. And after that, we'll speak to Mr. Parnas because he's a legend. And he knows the stuff we're going to be using to make those rollers. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I think it's this stuff. It's called Odacetol. This is a really, really dense plastic that you can put in a lathe machine. He has some. I'm sure that's what he's talking about. I've used it to make steering bushes and all sorts of things for cars I've had in the past. Chain tensioner for Dave's motorbike, I made some out of that. It's fully machinable in the lathe, it's great stuff. So what we're gonna do is this. When, by the time we get to the next video, I'll have all the parts to recondition these. As I said, I'm not gonna do Schmico restoration on these, I'm just cleaning them up and rattle canning them. So that's the dodgiest bit of resto you'll see me doing. And that can go to the side for now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this one apart, do the same thing to that, and then all our motors should be in good, healthy condition. Uh, in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Um, please enjoy classic and I'll see you around.